everyone. My name is Josh Gatewood with uh, Patriot Consulting. And here today with Kevin Vanover, and we're going to discuss Intune Remote Help. Hi, everyone. My name is Kevin Vanover. As Josh pointed out, I'm going to be uh, talking about remote help today, and uh, we're just going to do a little Q&A, uh, just introduce the feature from me from Intune um, so you can see what the benefits of it are. So uh, with that, uh, Josh, if you don't mind, I'll go ahead and get it kicked off on you know the benefits of what remote help can do for us. All right. So the nice thing about it is, is that you don't have to have a third party tool. You don't have to set up integration with Intune. It's something that's going to be baked in. You just have to simply enable it. And um, in the demo portion, you know, I might show you how to do that, but I was trying to keep this sort of short and sweet today. So we might get into more of the configuration and how to in a secondary session. But today I just really wanted to go over the benefits and give you a demonstration of what it looks like from the helper and the uh, helpee or the person re requesting help. All right, so this is something that can be used for both managed devices as well as unmanaged devices. It does support Windows 10, Windows 11, 21H2 at a minimum. Um, it supports Android, and as Josh found out this morning, it actually supports Zebra, which that in itself, you know, is a game changer, and it may just make oh, that's totally worth it. So that's that's, that's a huge thing. All right, um, it also supports Mac OS. Now, using Mac OS, you have to actually go through a web client in order to establish the session and I didn't prepare a demo for that today uh, but you know I do have two Windows devices set up and I'll show you how that looks and how it works a really really good feature about this also is that you can use our back so if you just wanted to have say tier one be able to access certain machines but not other machines tier two can be set up or you can set up a you know a, a highly privileged you know group of users that can support those devices uh, with remote help. That way you can sort of segregate who has access to sensitive information or sensitive machines. So there is a way you can do that. And on top of that, you can now add conditional access to this. So you can use conditional access against the remote help app so that it will challenge the helper with MFA before granting access to the helpee or the person requesting help. So that way you don't have to worry about bad actors or at least it mitigates it quite a bit, bad actors gaining access through the remote help utility to end users endpoints. So that's a huge benefit uh, from a security standpoint. And as we, we know, we are a security first organization. All right, yeah, that, so no, that's that's definitely something that with that conditional access moving toward that defense in depth strategy so that you can have that added absolutely. wrapper around it as well. So uh, yeah. I can imagine like a scenario where it's like in order to be the helper, you have to be on a compliant device and maybe put uh, additional CA signals on that. So that's really cool. Yeah. And since you brought up the compliance. If the device that you're supporting is not in compliance, it will warn the helper, hey, this device is not meeting device compliance requirements, so be careful. Don't yeah. you know, do not do anything silly. <laughs> you know, be careful about sensitive information because this device is, is not meeting compliance. And that might be why you're in there helping them after all, but yeah. it is something that it gives you a fair warning that the device is not compliant. So that is a nice feature to have, and I have seen uh, demonstrations of that as well. Now, yeah, so that to wrap be, this like, up, I guess, go ahead. Not, not as like, it's not compliant because, you know, there's no bit locker, so you have to log in and find out what's going on. Uh, but what about like elevation when you're like the helper? Is that something that's baked in? Like, can you do like the, the UAC for admin access or how does that work? Yes. So if you have the uh, Intune help desk role, you'll be able to uh, take advantage of the UAC that may come from an elevation. Sweet. Nice. Great question. All right, and then to wrap it up today, what um, the, the last thing we'll cover is not wrapping it up currently, but when we're done, um, I will. I wanted to, to to share with you that you can look at session logs and reporting, so you can see um, when someone provided help to an end user who was the helpee, who was the helper, um, and so you'll be able to get reporting on that. And so if you have that for tracking purposes, or you wanted to go back and reverse engineer who did what, when, and where, you will have those analytics available to you within the Intune interface. Nice. All right. I'm ready to see it. All right. So let's give you a demonstration of what it looks like here. Let me share my screen. All right. Let me know when you're good to go and you can see that for me, Josh. Thumbs up. Awesome sauce. So um, what we have here is um, the machine on my left is a, uh, a person who needs help. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually go to the machine on my right 
and I'm going to generate a security code. So the helper, the helpee, the person needing assistance has contacted the help desk and they're saying, hey, um, something's going on, I need some assistance. So they say, okay, let me give you a security key. So uh, in both scenarios, the user is going to open up the remote help app. Now, just a quick uh, sidetrack, the remote help app is not something that's loaded by default on your Windows 10, Windows 11 devices. So it is something you can download, then wrap, and then deploy with Intune, and it would get installed on the devices. So that just FYI. But once it's installed, this is what it looks like when it's open. So the helper is going to generate a key. You know what? I'm going to switch roles here just because I'm not sure that I gave Captain America the correct role-based access to do the helper role, but I do know that my account does have it, so I'm going to switch. So the one Thanks. on the left is going to be the helper. The one on the right is going to be the helpee. So I'll go ahead and generate. Can't security. give Captain America access. No, so that's good. <laughs> he's he's not trusted. You know, he he sort of yeah. did his thing, and you know they don't trust his. Uh, his loyalties any longer. So one of the things you can see here is you'll see the security code and you will see that it expires. Now you can copy this to a clipboard or you can provide instructions for them. But the easy peasy way is just go ahead and copy it to the keyboard and you can punch it into teams or you can just verbally tell them. So then I'll go over to the uh, help B device and I'm gonna go ahead and put that key in. And once it's there, they can go ahead and submit. And what you're gonna see happen is that on both devices, you'll see the connection happening. Hey, they're talking. What's going on is they're talking outbound to port 443, and there are some network considerations. We'll talk about that. But what you can see here is now Captain America has said, hey, I need some help. Would you like to take full control, or do you just want to view my screen? Once I've selected this, Captain America screen will go in, you know, into uh, the active connection. To start off with, I'm just going to show you view screen. Now I can take control later on. So if they're, you know, a difficult user to help, they're having trouble following instructions, or you just don't want to talk them through it because it's just easier to fix it than it is to try to guide them, then you might decide to take control at a later time. Now, once I have told it, hey, um, I want to view your screen, the user still has given given the the right to say decline or allow. Maybe they determined that they don't they don't need it all of a sudden, they just want to end the session. Okay, so, but I'm gonna go ahead and let it go in. And what you'll see is over here on the left screen, it's going to show you what's on my right screen. This is the, this is exciting. Oh, looks like it's happening. It's happening. Yeah, there it is. That's pretty fun. So you'll yeah. notice at the top of the administrative screen, um, I'm going to have the ability to do certain things. Like if I just wanted to do um, a laser pointer, so I can come out here and I can, you know, sort of guide the user. Hey, I want you over Secure. here. Yeah, I want you to come down here and click on this, this start menu. And then once you've done that, so I'll go over to the user's device now and I'll click start. And he's going to say, great. Now I want you to come over here and I want you to click on this settings icon, right? And so then the user can say, okay, great. Um, let me click on settings for you. And I don't, you know, maybe you want to go look at the accounts because you're trying to understand, you know, why is the device not syncing or I help, you know, I need to help them authenticate in some way. Um, this is where you can get to those settings. Um, as you can see, when I'm on the left screen now, I can't click anything. All I'm doing is just whatever, you know, tool I've used um, in the in the uh, control panel. That's what I can do at this point in time. I now, like if I want just just chasing the laser pointer around. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> so let's say I've gotten to a point now where I want to actually just take over. You'll see here at the top left, I have a request control button. I can go ahead and click this button. And it's going to come over here and it's going to say, hey, Kevin has requested control. Do you want to allow this? The user has the, the, the privilege to say yes or no. And it's going to go ahead and grant me control now that I've said take control. And now that I've got that, whenever it uh, looks like it's, yeah, it's working. Okay, so now, as you can see on the left, that's where I'm navigating. And it's showing you the result of it on the end user side. Um, so we have the benefit of seeing both the helper and the helpee at the, and within the same screen, but this is to show you what the experience looks like. So I want to go access worker school, and there it is. I can then click this information. Okay, great. I'm just looking to make sure the policies are applied that I have established to this device. This is all great. Um, okay, if I want to go ahead and sync the device because I've established some new policy and I want it to go out and grab it. Um, so it's a little bit more immediate gratification, you know, because with an Intune, it is an internet-based service. And sometimes you have to wait for a period of time to go by for some sort of setting to come through. And it makes, you know, 
um, deployment and troubleshooting a little bit, you know, frustrating sometimes because it's not as quick as we'd like it to be. You know, that's generally like that sync button. That's that's huge. Uh, and the delay between the two, I really didn't notice much. Right, there was a little bit of lag, but uh, for the most part, it was fairly instant in real time for yes. uh, while you're just pulling different things up. So that's that's also nice. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's it's really just a you know a really beneficial tool you know for a help desk tier one tier two kind of scenario. And you know there's different ways to license this. So you can do it as a part of the Intune suite. The Intune suite is going to give you other uh, capabilities within Intune. Obviously, we're just focused today on remote help, so I'm not going to go and dive in into those too much. But then also, you can do as an add-on license, and that is a per-user model in either scenario. So just make sure you're aware that you just can't buy a tenant-wide license on this. You've got to buy an Intune suite, and you have to make sure that you have quantities that will support the users uh, within your use case. And then, yeah, of course, the same with – go ahead. Yeah, that was definitely something. Uh, sorry to interrupt. That was definitely something that uh, when it first came out and it was in preview, it was like, "This is great, but how much does it cost? This is great, but how much does yeah. it cost?" Uh, and then, yeah. so right now, as of I guess like March 2024, it's like 350 per user uh, if you don't get it bundled within the Intune suite. Um, so yeah, that was a uh, licensing. It's 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 uh, it is an add-on. So. Good call out on Absolutely. that. Absolutely. And when you compare that to other third parties, because everyone's always saying, Microsoft, why do you keep adding these things and then just adding a license cost that yeah. you're, you know, you're trying to agree? Well, at the end of the day, if you got a third party tool, you know, it's probably going to cost you more money than it, it is with the Microsoft remote help. So compare it to, say, a team viewer. I don't know what that license cost is off the top of my head, so I'm not going to say it's more or less, but, you know, it's a way to sort of say, okay, Fair game, you know, this is something that is a sort of, you know, enhanced feature, and the only other way you're going to get it is through a third party tool, whether it's log me in or team viewer, uh, it doesn't really matter. So why not have it all within a single pane of glass and pay yep. that lower license fee and don't have to worry about the operational cost of integration between Intune and whatever the third party product is. So that's my two yep. cents on that. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. Also, with like the third-party products, like this is more scope to your tenants. Uh, so it is something that to where you can allow it, and uh, it's Microsoft managed, so you don't have to worry about like managing the platform itself. Uh, so that's also like can cut down on some of the runway from having like a third-party app. Plus the integration into conditional access, that's also huge for as we talked Absolutely. about the defense and depth strategy. Absolutely, great call nice. out, Josh. Thank you. All right, so what I wanted to demonstrate for you now was I'm, I'm going to see if I can grab my tenant here real quick. Yes, there we go. So this is the um, – let me refresh this. This is the uh, reporting data. and – yeah, the new analytics. Uh, so it's showing you the sessions. So you can see here that you know there are a couple sessions going on. There were two sessions, uh, four minutes, and it sort of gives you this. Now, I don't have a ton of sessions, but as you know over time, this will fill in for you. But then if you click on the remote help sessions at the top, you'll be able to see who was the provider, who was the recipient of the help, um, what the device the name was, what was the operating system, and when it occurred. When did it start? When did it end? So this helps you sort of say, okay, a change was made that impacted production on said device or some sort of misconfiguration or we wanted to say we wanted to use this as you know we use this to complete certain tasks you know we had to connect to each machine and get something done it normally would have required a manual go sit down get to the device and type in whatever you know you needed to uh to accomplish the task so this is a way to track that as well so a lot so of different huge. ways you could use this mm -hmm. yeah i would uh i guess like as a help desk manager i would be able to export this data so i can know like you know, who, who's doing helping for Absolutely. different users, like who's the users that's calling in the most, maybe they'll have to have some type of end user training or something like that, or maybe yeah, talk about that, like, I never thought about their, that. that's, that's their really device. Case. Yes. Yeah. No. And then, so if you export it, you got it to CSV. So that can be ingested into power BI or uh, another data visualization. So um, yeah, that would be, that'd be helpful seeing it like uh, some analytics on who's doing what, when, uh, and the frequency Absolutely. of that. Okay, and a, a couple other real quick things while we're in here. So if I go into the settings, this is where you would actually enable remote help within your tenant. So you'll see right now it's currently configured, but when you first come into Intune and you see this, it'll show as not enabled and you have to come out here and you drop it down, click enabled. And then, so this is where I can allow remote help on the unenrolled devices. This is where I get to choose whether I wanted it to just be managed or do I also want to be able to support unmanaged devices. I don't see any reason why you wouldn't want to, would not, would, would not want to support unmanaged devices. 
Um, so if someone's working remotely from a home computer and they're saying, hey, I'm having trouble getting something set up and you allow that. If you don't, hey, all, all's fair. Yeah. Um, yeah. But then also chat. So this is something you can turn on or off. Um, I was looking at the chat while I was in it. And I think that if you didn't have the ability to talk on the phone via a Teams conversation, the chat would be very helpful. But otherwise, you know, I, I don't see it being very useful. Um, so that's just my opinion. You know, if somebody else might have a use case where it's like, oh, no, no, we got to have chat for X, Y, Z reason. Yeah, the, the time I've ran into where chat was helpful, there was like a geolocation. So uh, mm. using chat and it was also like a, using translation during the chat uh, helped ah. out by like putting into like a, a translate app. Uh, so, so that helped out to being able to um, make that happen. So, uh, but yeah. Awesome. All right, a cool. couple awesome. other quick things. So um, let's go down to, I wanted to show you once you've licensed it, um, so here's the Intune add-ons, and this is where you can see, uh, you know, what's a part of the Intune suite. Uh, if you drop this down, you can go out the details, and it'll uh, show you whether or not it's available to you, whether or not you've got it licensed. But once you have it licensed, if you go within the Intune interface and you go to a user, I wanted to show you, so I'll go to Captain America, and Captain here America. Um, we'll go to licenses. <laughs> And you can see what licenses have been assigned to the user, and you can see there's the Intune suite, uh, and you know that uh, the remote help is a part of that. So you, you're fully aware that you have the license for that. So um, that's all I wanted to share for this session because I wanted to try to keep it short and sweet and just go over high level. Um, we will do a follow-up session on configure, how to, uh, and setup. And I think that you'll greatly benefit from that. And we'll go a little bit more into the firewall considerations and the network considerations. But just off the top, just realize that as long as you have outbound 443, um, it is going to be encrypted with TLS uh, as well. Um, so that should get you all you need. Um, and there are, there are some um, some uh, UPN ports, uh, you know, I'm sorry, uh, URLs that you need to be able to have access to. Um, and I'll give you a demonstration of what those are. Um, so we'll cover that more in detail in our next session. So I really want to thank everybody for for tuning in and given our, you know, uh, this is our first sort of session on remote help, but I, I really appreciate your time. Yeah, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, make sure that you like and subscribe at the bottom. Also, if you've got any like comments, any notes, uh, any questions or struggles, just feel free to leave it in the comments and then we'll get back at you. So thanks again for your time. Kevin, you crushed it and we'll get at you on the next one. Thank you.